For today's Double Indie Game Review is two passionate platformers of Metroidvania style, with the likes of Maki's Adventure and Berserk Boy. We're going to start things off with Maki's Adventure. We play as a shark spirit that keeps peace within the waters of a strange land. When an evil god threatens that peace and is going to try and take over, it is up to us to slash and swim our way across the islands in order to find the necessary items to save the day. Our gameplay here feels like kind of a mix between a traditional Metroidvania and that of, say, an Echo the Dolphin in terms of the swimming and swim physics. On land, you'll be able to run, jump, dash, and beat up enemies trying to get from point A to point B. Whenever you jump into any body of water, you will transform into shark form, which you can use to traverse the waters, as well as unlock up to three different forms, each with kind of a different attack or special move. The world itself is very minimalistic. There's only three major islands to explore, but there are bonus things to collect. The game features a boatload, no pun intended, or should I say an ocean load, of mini games to do. Many games will allow you to unlock additional coins or money you can use to purchase potions, and there are a decent number of side quests and things to find in each area. The main thing about Monkey's Adventure is that this is definitely a short form Metroidvania. You can probably get this done in a good afternoon's worth of play. If you're hoping for like a Hollow Knight 20 plus hour massive Metroidvania adventure, Monkey's Adventure is definitely not it. If I had any issues with the gameplay, the game does feature a lot of annoying death pits and death areas, which kind of feel a little bit clashing with the more general or more casual charm of the story and gameplay. Fortunately though, checkpoints happen within each room so you will never be losing too much progress. In terms of overall difficulty, the boss fights can be a little bit on the trickier side, they will throw a lot at you, and you are going to have to get good at doing some dodging. But all in all, if you've had any experience with a Metroidvania in the past 20 years, then you should be more than prepared for Maki's Avenger. So if you enjoy your Metroidvanias with a touch of swimming and slashing, along with a lot of minigames to go around, then I recommend you check it out. We now switch over to some action with Berserk Boy. In the future, an evil scientist is threatening to destroy the world with the power of Berserk Orbs. And it's going to be us to save the day, one level, one jump, and one upgrade at a time. Our gameplay here is kind of a mix between a Mega Man X style of movement, dashing, and jumping with that of a Metroidvania. We gain access to different forms via our Berserk Orbs. After you beat a boss, you gain their power, and this will allow you to change into their form. Each form comes with it different upgrades, a different way of attacking, and a different kind of movement tech or movement base ability. The structure of this one does fall into some elements of Metroidvania, but it is more on the linear side. Each one of the game's worlds kind of capitalizes on one specific form, and that form is what you're going to be focusing on in it. But you can use the other abilities for quicker combat, or to circumvent some of the challenges. Now, the difficulty in this one, I would say this is on the moderate side. You can play the game with having a lives limit, or just play with having infinite lives, and as the game points out the beginning, there are no achievements locked to it, so I just did just because for the extra lives challenge. Combat is going to be a little bit on the tricky side. This does follow Mega Man rules as certain enemies and bosses are weaker or stronger to certain attacks. Once you figure that out, you should be able to break right through them. The upgrade system is nice and it does lead to some potentially game breaking options. And there are different challenges and secrets to get if you want to go for the true ending and true final bout. In terms of issues I have with this one, the main problem that I have with Berserk Boy is that I feel like some of the powers and abilities are a bit on the redundant side. For the fourth unlock, 
you gain the power of the kind of jetpack or infinite float while you have special meter. For your fifth power, you get double jump. And at that point, it just feels like double jump is unnecessary. I also found the double jump to be a little bit on the jankier side in terms of how you're supposed to aim to use it, because you use it to bounce off of enemies or specific hazards. Even though you're going to have up to five forms to switch to, more than likely, you can probably get due with two or three outside of the specific environmental interactions. Again, each form has a one specific thing that you must use it for in order to get around or find a secret. Combat felt really good, the jumping, general movement are all very responsive. But it did feel like by the end of the game, like there really wasn't any real sense of growth to the environmental or level design. And that will kind of limits it in terms of Metroidvania gameplay. Where in a Metroidvania, as you get further in, the level design grows and evolves based on what you have access to. In this one, because each world focuses on one, and there are sections that you will kind of be forced to swap between one or two or more forms, you're never really given a chance to like get really tested in terms of different tech or different abilities, which I think is to this game's benefit, as it does get very fast paced and even with the ability to kind of pause and swap, it can be a little bit tricky to swap to the right form, especially with some of the platforming challenges. I would say if you like your action platformers with that touch of Mega Man style gameplay, then this is definitely a recommendation. But if you are looking for more on the Metroidvania design in terms of evolution and level design growth, then this one may not work for you. So with that said, we're going to wrap up this double review here. Both games were played with press keys provided by developers. Let me take a look at your game. For a future stream and video, please reach out. And with that said, everyone, have a great night, and I will see you all next time. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon, and come back for daily discussions on game design here, and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.